here tonight. Wheel skating action is coming your way. Multiple engines on one tractor and the most spectacular machines in the business. Stick with us, it's all next. Welcome to the Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour. If you love horsepower, don't touch that dial. We have a lot of it coming your way, courtesy of the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. Tonight, we're in a little town in Southern Illinois called Fairfield, and the event is the Dixie Choppers Fall Nationals. Hello everyone, I'm Ken Stout. I told you we'd have a lot of horsepower. Well, take a look at the tractor I'm standing next to. It's a super mod. That's right, the multi-engine tractors are in the house. And each one of these power plants makes approximately 2,000 to 2,500 horsepower. That's right, eight to 10,000 horsepower out of one tractor. And of course, a drive line to help all these engines work in unison is nothing short of extraordinary. Now, the man behind the wheel of the tractor known as Venom in this category is Wayne Bunnage. He also has a brother. His brother is Steve, and he'll be competing in the Super Mod two-wheel drive category. And with more on that class, let's go to my colleague, Leslie Mears. We've got a very unique situation here with this Super Modified two-wheel drive truck class. You see behind me the Bullseye Chevrolet of Keith Long. His brother Ricky in that 1941 Willys is also at the top of the heap on the points chase. Nobody can catch Team Long at the top of the heap, so it's down to the two brothers battling out for number one. Keith is our test puller tonight. He has the option to either take this hook and his distance or drop last to the end of the class. That's where his brother Ricky is. There's a lot of things that can happen to this track out here between first hook and last hook, so we're going to see if that makes a difference. Let's get right to it. Keith Long really buzzing the motor, and we've got to tell you, a lot of it is because of the weather. It has been raining out here, currently sprinkling right now, and they're having a hard time getting a hold of this track. They're literally just blowing the rear tires off of these things. Look at the blades or the butterflies on that injector hat. That's why you see them not open up until later on in the run. He's rolling that thing out, and he's really trying to figure out where this thing's going to hook up to the track, and it just doesn't happen. We're going to send it down to Ted, who has more in our Super Mod category. Ted? I'm standing with a Super Modified legend already. Now, actually, Bill Leishen, you've been, you've been pulling for 26 years. This has to be one of your favorite classes, just because you've got so much power. 8,000 horsepower. Ken talked about it off the top of the show. Four V8 Arius engines. Two of them are backwards. It's so much fun to do. Yeah, it's really a whole lot of fun. Usually, you can hook that up and feel that power. It, it's so much more fun than a two-wheel drive sometimes. It, Two-wheel drive is actually harder to drive and wait on it. This, you come with it and feel the power. It's pretty exciting most of the time. And the fans absolutely love it just because of the sheer power. It's so loud. It's just got everything going for it. And I know you love that because you play to the fans a lot. Oh, yeah, they love it. You know, they see four engines on there and 8,000 horsepower. It just appeals to them. And it's kind of crazy sometimes to sit on there, they think. We got some moisture out here tonight, though, buddy, because now you're the, you're the test puller out here. What are you expecting with this track? It's, it's pretty tacky and slippery all at once. It's pretty tricky. It looks a little slick. Guy's not going to be able to come with it real quick. Going to have to wait and hope it hooks. Hope it doesn't start hooking and unhooking and bouncing. You know, there's a lot of crazy things can happen. And being a test puller is not much fun. <laughs> well, you know, you say it's not much fun, but you know what? I know this guy just a little bit just from covering this, and uh, he's also been known as the sandbagger. So watch out for this dude. Get in there, will you? Thanks. Thanks a lot. And ironically enough, he just described Keith Long's test pull. It's exactly what happened to him. Hooked a little bit late, started bouncing. It's pretty ugly there. So we'll go to our next truck, Super Mule. Robert Martin behind the wheel, and the sled has been adjusted. Love the old Chevy, great looking ride, 324-63. Looks like he was able to get the combination right here, Leslie. Watch the rear tires. You see that they're really, really low. Sometimes there's even a crest in that tire, but as he takes off, 
All that power is really going to squat it down. He's going to get a lot of surface area on the track, so he's going to be able to move a lot of dirt and really sink it in, go cleat for cleat, and push it out the gate. That's exactly what you want to do. All right, Mr. Martin, 324 and change. Uh, any problems with the sled there? You seem like there's maybe some issues going on. Uh, they changed it a little bit, but we done a pretty good job coming out of the hole and driving it till it, till it hooked up and kind of got the movement on it and it wanted to come on in. So. It's a pretty slick track right now with the moisture coming up, with the rain coming down earlier. You got the best hookup of the night so far. Uh, any different strategy you used because of the track? Oh, I'd say they'll, they'll probably put a little more weight on the back of the truck and uh, they'll get a little more tire speed, maybe. Well, you're in the lead right now. Let's see if it lasts. Well, hopefully it stays there. All right, next competitor coming out, obviously behind the wheel of the Ford, is the rare breed and driven by Daryl Barner. Once again, they have adjusted the weight on the sled, trying to find that sweet spot for these guys. This will make him our test puller, and they'll have one more chance to see if they got this sled setting right. He will have the option to take this puller, turn it down, but I tell you what, with these expensive motors on here, they're not going to waste anything, and they're not going to hold anything back on this run. Just a great looking shot there about mid-track. Once that weight starts to transfer and they can really get a bite on those rear tires, the front end sails up in the air and they go to work. A great shot again at these blades. You see them slow and steady coming out of that hole. You don't want to match the throttle back there or you will blow the tires off and you'll just sit there and spin all night long. Does a great job of keeping the front end up in the air. A little too much right there. And that's when he starts to go sideways and he's going to have to get on the brakes. Remember, brakes equal less distance, but still a fine run out here on this new sled setting. Next competitor, Jessica Jackson, did a great job earlier this year in a truck called Parajax, and it has to be tricky to take the weight off the front, put it on the back of the truck to get the sled in moving initially, but then at the end, once it hooks, it wants to lift the front end way up in the air. Quite a dance. <laughs> and Jessica having absolutely no mercy on that power plant. She just matted that thing from the get-go and said, you better hold on because we're going. You made a good point, Ken, about transferring the weight. These trucks only weigh 6,200 pounds. So it's really tricky to make sure that you get enough weight on the front end, that it stays down so that you don't get too far up in the air. The whole goal to achieve that teeter-totter effect, the front end six to 12 inches off the ground to make sure you've got equal distribution of that weight. Next competitors called Moving and Grooving, Don Finney, to come out here and try to find that magical combination on a very slippery track. And Don Finney with that big bad Ford goes 305, 38, an excellent job. He does a really good job of rolling it out of the hole. And you see as soon as it hooks up to the track right there, the front end, that's that teeter-totter effect that we're looking for. That's exactly what you want to do. A lot of different things that these pullers can do to help achieve that. There's tire pressure out there. You can let a lot of the air out, like we talked about, get more surface area on the track. And you really see them wrinkling up and moving that dirt back there. Just a really, really great run. And that'll put Don Finney in the lead. All right, normally we pick a straightforward dark horse. I'm going to go with the guy who's in sixth place right now, and that's Stan Shelton in the Cutting Edge Machine. He's in sixth, but from sixth place to tenth place, less than two points. And two points, as we all know, is only one position in the finals. It could be anybody. Stan could have what it takes to hook it up here on the right side of the track. All right, the first of two Tatums coming up. This will be Tony. Truck called Extreme Pleasure. And it looks like Tony spent a lot of money on that run, quite possibly ventilated the bottom of that power plant and really put it to work there about halfway through. Team Tony.
Tatum really having a lot of trouble this year with the extreme pleasure. We saw them in Owensboro. Lots of money going up in the air with that white smoke when they grenaded the motor there. He's got a great run going here. The front end's up in the air. He launches really good. You're going to see the butterflies open up. All that air going through the injector, being forced down into the motor by the supercharger. Good stuff there. Nice teeter-totter. Really weighted good. There it is at the end. You see all that oil spilling out on the ground. And that shiny stuff you see right there, folks, that's aluminum. And that's the block. And that one's done, but we're not done. We have a lot more pulling action coming your way. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Dixie Chopper Fall Nationals here at Fairfield, Illinois. We've just gotten things started in the two-wheel drive category. Before we go any further, we're going to send it down to our colleague Ted Brunson who has an update on the weather. Ken and Leslie, it was highly doubtful that this event was even going to take place. Three inches of rain yesterday. It looked very ominous earlier today. It sprinkled a little bit, and now as we get later in the evening, the moisture is coming up. If you look down here, this dirt is extremely slick. I mean, normally you could get some good tack out of if you put your shoe down there, but these guys are having a lot of trouble hooking up right now, and as the evening goes on, it's going to get even slicker. Will Teasley in the bad boy, and as these guys go, if they run in the same spot, they might actually loosen this thing up a little bit and get it to where they can actually get a good grip. Will Teasley was able to get in the throttle pretty early, but it didn't pay off. He never really transferred the weight. I didn't see the front end come up. These drivers really looking for anything to get a hold of this slick track. As Ted said, it's a little slick. Slick can also mean hard, which means it's going to be really hard for them to dig those rear tires in, dig those cleats in, and make up ground on the track. You see the butterflies open really, really early, spinning the tires back there, just kind of burning them off a little bit. Not what you're looking for out here tonight. Only seven gold, but that age, not an excuse. He's got four years. He's also very busy because he's also in this truck. Back to back pulls for Will Teasley in the high tech. We should tell you, 17 years old, still in high school. Happy kid today. He got the to skip school. Actually, he had a doctor's note. Apparently, the sickness is truck pull. <laughs> 282, 23, a little bit better, but still not good enough to take the lead this class really, really hard to figure out what you're going to do as a driver tonight. You've got the slick track to contend with. Also remember, these guys are forcing all that air down into the engine. So you've got barometric pressure, humidity, air temperature outside to think about as well when you're setting up these gears and you're trying to find the ideal gear setting to make that pass tonight. The whole combination has to come together as these guys chase that elusive full pull mark. Up next is Shannon Leishner in the Dirt Slinger. This is son of Bill Leishner, who we'll see later on tonight in the Super Mod category. Two seventy-eight, sixty-seven, and it seems like the guys have kind of settled back around the two seventy-two, eighty mark lately. Those guys are really getting into the throttle early, and it seems like it's just too much power too early on the track. We also want to mention that the Dirt Slinger is the only Aries in the class. Lots of Hemis, lots of Sassies, some Fontanas out there as well, but this Aries just too much horsepower too soon on the track. We'll continue on here in our two-wheel drive category. Robert Martin is the next puller in the Grim Reaper. And Robert Martin will also lay up short. So these guys are all struggling right now. 
Again, it just goes back to trying to put that weird combination of things together to equal the distance that you need to win tonight. You heard it zing a little bit on that run, and you also see a little bit of extra fuel coming out of the headers there. I just think that he wasn't in the right gear tonight, maybe a little too low, and maybe just not the right setting as well. I also see a little ice forming there on the butterflies as the methanol runs through that injector. That in combination with the air out there is not uncommon to see these things freeze up a little bit. Wide open, trying to make it happen. Just not going to get there tonight. Looks like quite a ride, though. Full throttle, the name of the truck. The defending class champion, Lisa Tatum, behind the wheel. a great onboard shot. 264.86 won't be enough to take the lead, but what a ride on the sled. That's right. You get a good chance there to see Lisa really take advantage of easing out of the throttle. She does a great job of just letting it get out there. About the 200-foot mark, that's where she really starts to hook up, and you see the front end really launch into the air. Got a little sideways there, which hurt her as far as her distance was concerned, but she had the right combination trying to roll it out easy. Steve Jacks backing up to hook up the pair of Dag's truck. And hitch height very critical, right, Leslie? That's right. They have a very high hitch height. Because they are so light, we want that hitch height up in the air. What's going to happen as soon as that box tops off, that means all that weight is going to pull that hitch down. And that's why you want to have that equal weight distribution because you want that weight loading on those rear tires. And Steve Jacks will also lay up short 265. The truck is screaming. It sounded awesome, but we didn't see the distance. He's out there on the left side of the track, really trying to find a fresh piece of real estate to try to get some more traction out there. He thought that if he stayed out of the road that everybody else had built, that he might be able to gain a little bit more distance on the end. Didn't work out so well for him, but I'm sure somebody else will put it on that. Games night. The only program on British TV dedicated to debating the hottest topics in gaming is Move. You're watching the Dixie Chopper Bowl Nationals here with the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. Willie Make It is the name of the truck. Up next, Ricky Long. Spectacular looking ride here. Love the Willies. Great body style. See the moisture on that blower hat just kind of. Blowing off here in the breeze as it starts to ice up a little bit. And even with a little bit of information that he might have been able to get from Keith Long, he's not able to get past the mark that it takes to win here tonight. 305 is a mark to beat. We haven't seen that in a while. You really watch the butterflies here, and it's the wait, wait, and wait some more is what his philosophy is on this run. He finally gets into it, but it's almost like it's too late. He launches too far down the track, and at that time, it's just too late. The box tops off, way too heavy back there for him, just not enough momentum to carry him through the run. So right now, we'll go on board with him. Right there, it really goes to work. Pulls it off to the left just a little bit, but won't have enough to get past Don Finney in the moving and groove. And 305.38 is the mark that he set. That's what you got to get to if you want to take over the lead. The full pull mark is set at 310. Up next, the Irish challenger, Dan Walsh, behind the lead. Oh, seven, 46, another great onboard shot there as we took a ride on that transfer box, and man, it slams hard. It's going to hit him out there about the 240 mark, but we talked about real estate. The Irish Challenger taking it to the high side of the track and picking a brand new spot that nobody else had been in. That is his key here to that 307 mark. 
High and dry. Easy does it. Look at that thing launch. He's really getting the job done. Pouring all that horsepower from that 575 cubic inch motor. He can't ask for a better hook out here tonight. All right, Dan, you took the right side of that track. I was thinking that could be it, and right now it is. You're the leader at 307.46. Not too bad. This track's pretty slick right now. It is. God, that's wonderful. I didn't know I'd go up to the lead, but I thought it was a good run. The, the track has gone away. The only place out there is that right sideline. Uh, I wish I could have had a little more weight up front. It surprised me. It was better than I thought, because I think I probably could win another seven, eight feet. But we got longs back there. They're real smart. They seen what I did. So uh, being with my front end light in the air like that, I think I'm in trouble. I, I don't I don't think it'll hold up because them boys are experienced. You got to have confidence, my man. Confidence. I've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> but it will take a good run. They're going to have to walk it out. I walked it out over 100 feet, and that's the key. These things have 3,000 horse, and horsepower don't do you any good if you don't hook it up to the track. So tonight's kind of an experienced track. We've talked about that so much. We watch this next truck come out here. Talk about a beautiful ride called the Cutting Edge. Stan Shelton behind the wheel. One of those guys that has a lot of experience. Pretty easy to see right there, Leslie. He never got a hold of the track. He never got a hold of the track. He also looked like he was a little heavy on the front end. Watch that nose. It never leaves the ground. Those tires touch that dirt the whole entire time. If you can't get your front end up in the air, you're not able to shift a lot of that 6,200 pounds to the back like you're going to need. Once that box tops off, the pan sinks in, and those browser bars on the pan really start sinking into the track, digging, making it tougher and tougher for you to pull down the track. Well, you can really see all the moisture on the top of that truck as well. Don Nelson, old school, baby. Gunsmoke, the name of the tea bucket here. The open cockpit truck, the pulling vehicle, if you will. And there used to be a bunch of these guys out here. The Lucas Oil Pro Pulling Leg made a ruling that if you run a body on your truck, you get 200 pounds more as far as weight is concerned. This tea bucket running 200 pounds light tonight. A few misfires there out of the power plant as well. Sounded like he was shooting some ducks. 238, not even remotely close here this evening. Just really trying to work out the kinks as he's learning to drive the T-Bucket this year. Used to driving that super modified tractor and just a lot harder to drive this T-Bucket. A lot of different variations that you have to think about. You have to think about the weight transfer and the gear ratios. He does stay to the high side of the track, but he just doesn't have anybody else to go off out here because he is the only T-Bucket in the show tonight. So just nobody else to gain some information from. So really, all out there on his own. The lone wolf, if you will. As we continue on, we saw this truck earlier this evening. Keith Long in the bullseye. What a beautiful machine. Very surprised to see him down on the left side of the track. I thought for sure he'd go up where Dan Walsh was, but decided to go on a different line. And again, he'll come up short. Also came up short for the pair of jacks. Like we said, somebody else was going to give it another shot out there. Shoot a little ducks. He had some injector problems at Owensboro, Kentucky earlier in the year and thought that he got those all worked out. The front end is really, really high off the ground, and that's going to hurt him and take some of his distance off as well. He really slams down wild there at the end. And it just absolutely pulled that engine down till it stopped, and that's why it slammed the front end back down. Jared Nelson, the Midnight Revenger. Front end way up, a good looking pull, 290.77. It won't take over the lead, set by the Irish Challenger at 307.46, but a nice job. 
He's really trying to mimic that run by the Irish Challenger. You see him stay into that high side of the track out there. Launches a little bit early and gets the front end up in the air. It seems like these guys are really struggling with the weight distribution on the slick, slick surface out here. The white you see coming out of those tubes is the release of all that internal pressure that that 3,000 horsepower is creating inside that engine. We go on board here, watch the right hand just slowly ease down on the throttle. And right at the end, he was keeping his eye on that leader cone to see if he could drag the front of the sled past it. He came up a little short here tonight. Come on back, we've got more. We're down to the last couple of pullers here in the two-wheel drive category at the Dixie Chopper Fall Nationals. We still have the multi-engine tractors coming your way, though. The Super Mods will be up next. But first, we're going to finish this class up. The Midnight Gambler is the next truck to hook up. Another spectacular-looking ride. Backed up, hooked to the sled, waiting for the green flag. And Jeremy Nelson will apply the pressure. Oh man, everything sounded really good there to about 240 feet and that sled went to work and it pulled that motor right down. Pulled the motor down, yes, but sounded like it was really, really sick too. The panel van has struggled all year. First it was bend and rods, then he grenaded the motor. Tonight it sounded like it might have been a problem with the burst panel. Kim is right though, that sled topped off and it was more than the motor could handle. If he'd had it maybe in a lower gear, he might have been able to pick up some more speed out there, but that's still not going to prevent him from having that burst panel problem. So a tough run and a beautiful machine and we'll keep moving on. Steve Bunnage is up next. The truck is called Venom. We heard about Steve a little bit earlier in the top of the show. We talked about his brother running in the super mod category. We'll see them in just a little bit, so make sure you stick with us. Let's see how this man does. Yes, it's got a Hemi. Two seventy two eighty three, and he shook the door off of it. He might think like to think about hitting those power locks before he takes off from the line the next time. But he's staying on that high side up there where everybody else has had success. Remember the Irish Challenger out there in front with that 307 run. You see him having a little bit of an injector problem there as well. Extra fuel coming up out of those headers the whole way down the track tonight. Just not getting enough fire in there to burn it off, and that could be part of his problem as well. All said and done, he does not have enough distance to hang with him. Once again, we'll see the Super Mule come out here, and Robert Martin will find out if he's made any changes to the truck. Kind of tough to change the truck around when the sled was different the last time he hooked to it. One seventy-two, a respectable pull here tonight. Talk about walking it out slow. He really took his time. It seems like he tried to leave his run exactly the same as he did the first time. Like you said, Ken, walking it out there. It worked for him the first time. He thought that it might be able to do it the second time. Looks like the track has probably changed, though, since his first run. He's got a good setup on it, just not enough horsepower to pour to those rear wheels to get it done. Man, our Hookup of the day goes to Dan Walsh and the Irish Challenger. 3.07 here tonight. That new motor mid-season really helping him out tonight. Also picking that new spot on the track. That good real estate up there got it done. Danny has said that 307 and change would not hold up, and it did. You're a little surprised right now, aren't you? Oh, surprised, and I'm really happy. I kind of thought, especially like Keith Long and Sant Shelton, those guys, they would have seen how you had to really wait for it. You had to wait 150 feet before you gave the power. 
And um, I guess they just didn't wait long enough and mine held up and I'm just tickled. Uh, I got to thank my longtime sponsors, Carquest, Lucas for having this wonderful series, uh, Torkel for the fuel. Um, I'm just speechless. It's just wonderful to win. Uh, I've been struggling. This is my third motor this year. Um, we broke twice and bad. And finally what I did, I went out to uh, Roger Simon there and this is motor and we've run our last six seven runs and it's really come alive well you know what it, it's, it's what a great way to end the season for you but congratulations this will give you a lot of momentum heading into next year yeah i feel great about it. thank you great decision there roger simon a former champion inside of this class many times over the fan favorite goes to tony tatum keep in mind he blew that thing up but he put on a big fire show right at the end stick with us the super mods are next Mods and come out to play hardball. The Dixie Jumper, Paul Nationals here in Fairfield, Illinois. You're watching the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League, and we're about to back up the first test puller of the night. That is Bill Leishner. In the meantime, while we're doing that, let's send it back down to Ted Brunson for his dark horse pick in the class. Very tough to pick a dark horse in this category, but I'm going to go with the young guy, the kid, Michael Stewart in the down and dirty machine. He's pretty competitive. Uh, back in Goshen, he put on a good show. He's always been right there, really close. This could be his day. Very difficult track. Maybe it takes some experience, or maybe it takes some young luck. Well, if experience is the key, nobody has more than this guy. He knows how to win championships. He's been doing it for a long time. Bill Leishner and the Dirt Slingers, the first one out. Eight to 10,000 horsepower about to scream to life. Two forty is the mark, but still, what a ride! Those rear tires running in excess of a hundred miles per hour. And you see those motors lined up here. Something interesting about the dirt slinger that you're not going to see on the other tractors. He's got reverse rotation motors. Those motors spin towards the center of the tractor. That way, he does not get a lot of flex on that chassis, and that's maybe going to help him out because he's going to be able to stay a little bit straighter than everybody else. Also, parts and pieces falling off the front of that one. We'll try to determine what that is here in a little bit as we go on board here. The drive lines in these things are critical. We spoke briefly about that. Pretty amazing stuff, I've got to say. Let's send it down to Ted. Really had all kinds of stuff flying out of the bottom there. What's the deal, bud? Track's just too slick. Couldn't get a hold of it at all. I don't know whether they'll lighten the sled. I'll take that pull. If they leave the sled, they'll probably lighten it up and have to come back. Just Tires aren't hooking up. The power's just not working. I never hardly got on the throttle and just slick out there like driving on ice. So much horsepower, you can only spin it so much before the whole thing blows. Yeah, it's like driving your car on snow and trying to get it hooked up. The more you give it, the more it spins you back up. Just pretty difficult. I imagine they'll change the sled. We'll have to see what happens. That wasn't a very good pass. Didn't represent Tristler and Fast or anybody very good. I suppose they'll have to change it. Well. They have, in fact, changed it, and Ed Boyer out here with the War Wagon 2 is up next. I love the V12. The Allisons are just awesome. Spectacular engines. This is really old school. All the guys used to have these tractors, and now they've kind of fallen to the wayside, if you will. Very difficult to find parts for these things. Just a unique sound. 291.40 is the new mark to beat. Love to see him hanging on with this thing. Spectacular looking ride and certainly very unique. Well, you really see those rear tires spinning back there and you heard that whiz as they took off. Spinning so fast back there that they're making that noise. You saw the tire stall a little bit though. That's because the sled is so heavy. These guys create so much horsepower that they have to load that sled up to stop them. You see a big fire show there. Lots of fuel going into these big Allisons. You gotta love the old school. Come on back. We have more Supermod action. Welcome back. We're running the Supermod category here at the Dixie Chopper Fall Nationals. Check it out, man. Just an awesome looking ride there. 
and a great combination. This one is pretty unique, Leslie, as he backs his tractor up and gets it hooked to the sled. It's called the Texas Bull Whip, driven by Don Nelson, but a couple different types of engines on this one. That's right. He's got two Chevys hooked up back there, crank to crank, and then he's got that DT-466 International out there. He's got a lot of different things that he's got to think about when he takes off here. So we'll see him come out really, really, really slow because he's got to wait for the RPMs to come up on that alcohol motor. Yeah, baby! Going for a ride, man. Alcohol motor up in the front utilizing the turbochargers. Alcohol motors in the back utilizing superchargers. The front end comes up and he goes for a ride. Well, you know what they say, Ken? They do it bigger and badder in Texas. And here's an example. You're not going to see a wilder ride than that tonight. Just beautiful as he comes off the line. You'll really see it hook up as he pours all that methanol alcohol to it and just really launch up in the air. you got to love that wild ride bouncing on those back tires as they're squatting back there. Dirt flying everywhere. It's just beautiful. Man, oh, man. Churning the dirt up, man. Let's send it down to Ted. All right, Don, it's called the Texas Bull Whip, man. You rode this thing for longer than eight seconds, and it was a wild ride. Well, it's really hard to get going down here with this machine. The track's a little slick. Once I got it going, I put it to the floor and let it do what it could do. I tell you what, man, those triple turbos, you got the two 572s back here, that's a lot of power. It's such a unique design. Seems like you finally got it hooked up and going well. Well, the tractor is working well for me. I need a little better track, you know, with a get the horsepower and the tires going on the starting line, but today with the rain, that's all we can do. Well, that's exactly what we heard Bill Leischer say a little bit earlier. It's hard to get it going. Sean Swearing is coming out with a joker. What an amazing looking machine here too. Great paint. And by the way, this is the same Swearingen. His son runs in the Pro Mod category and IHRA, NHRA. So these guys know how to build blower motors. We expect big things out of this guy. That's how you get her done, baby. Out over 320 feet, John Swearingen shows them how to get down. Just a classic example of where less is more. Only three motors out here tonight. But let me tell you, he is running those big 1471 superchargers out there. And look at all that torque. He's really flexing that chassis and getting that thing to move down the track. Of course, lots of torque equals lots of horsepower. Those three motors out there probably making upwards of eight thousand horsepower and he gets every single bit of it to those rear tires as he pulls that sled out there tonight. He tells a great story. He used to pull in a local a local pulling league and they pretty much did not want him back anymore because he was just canning her hides. He comes out here now, he's playing with the big dogs and showing them that he can run with them as well. What a great looking pull here for Swearingen. Man, just a thing of beauty. Full pull plus 16 plus feet. Sean, you were nuts out there, man. This joker was going crazy. Well, the tractor did perform pretty well. We're very proud of it. Uh, it's been a tough track to figure out. and They've reset the sled twice, and maybe we got the right combination. I guess we'll wait and see. Yes, we will, because we have more of them ready to go. Stick with us here at the Pro Pulling League. Coming soon to X League TV. category here tonight at the Dixie Chopper Fall Nationals. That's some good action, and believe it or not, it's one of the three engine mods that's leading the pile right now with a full pull. It was the Joker who came out here and really laid it down. Next up is Wayne Bunnage in the tractor called Takes a Lickin' as he tries to line it up exactly where he wants to get it hooked to the sled. It's very important when they back up to the sled that they are perfectly square. They want to make sure when they get that hole shot that they're as straight as possible so they can pull that sled straight down the track. If they pull it side to side, they're going to lose some feet at the end of the track on their run. 
a good look here at how these motors are connected. Not like anything else in the class. These are outboards. They're hooked together sideways by a gearbox, the front two are. The back two hook the same way, then hook to that drive shaft to put all that power to the ground. And Wayne Bunnage will lay up short 196.54. And oddly enough, the two three-engine tractors have done better than the four-engine tractors here tonight. They're just having a hard time getting it off the line. You see a lot of dirt slinging back there, but it's very, very loose. That means that they're on that hard surface, like Phil Leisner talked about. It is slick out there, so you've got to try to make some modifications out there. The four-engine tractor is just maybe overpowering it tonight. You can see him shake his head in disgust, very disappointed. Realizes he had no shot at a win there tonight. Next up, Michael Stewart in the down and dirty. The kid's very aggressive, very emotional, family very involved here in pulling. As you can see, he's wiping off his visor there. We're getting late into the night. Lots of dew in the air, lots of good, cool air to go into those motors. So they should be making a lot of horsepower. It's just if they can figure out the right combination to pull that sled down the track. And Stewart got it figured out pretty good. 301 42, a good job there for the four engine tractor. Four engines tonight, just going to be one too many. But Michael Stewart does a great job with the down and dirty of rolling it off the line, waiting until about the 150 foot mark when it really hooks up. You see that torque right there? It means all that horsepower is going to the ground. A little bit of frame flex out there. Does carry it past the 300 foot mark. Lots of loose dirt behind him. A good run. And the last guy up here needs a full pull. Bill Leishner, who, by the way, is the 2007 Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League Super Mod champ. He's won many of them. We'll find out if he can win the show here tonight. He's got to get past that three-engine tractor driven by Sean Swearingen. He's got his work cut out for him because we have not seen anything like that tonight out of the four-engine combination. Oh, it looks like they're going to check him up here, Leslie. What, what are they checking? I think what they're doing is they're putting in the second chain. With the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling Link, they run three important factors that get hooked up to the tractor from the sled. They run a kill switch. They run the main chain that pulls the sled, and then they also run a safety chain. And Leichner going to work, but will not have enough to hang with Sean Swearingen tonight. The man behind the wheel of the Joker is your winner. Let's take another look at this pull. It just seems like these four engine tractors tonight are just overpowering the track. He had a good look at it the first time out and put a good 50 feet on his run from the first time. Made a lot of adjustments. You really see the tires back there bouncing just a little bit, trying to find a good surface out there to run on, but just nothing out there to find. Stays in that same track, that road in the center there, just not enough goodies to get it done. Hookup of the day goes to Sean Swearingen in the Joker. What an awesome looking ride. He's got that special Joe Ader chassis out there. Makes a big difference when you're talking about frame flex and torque. So if you get too much torque, it's going to dump the thing over to the side. So you got to get the perfect combination. All right, Sean. Congratulations, buddy. Way to go. You really tore this track up. A lot of guys had some major difficulties. You just cruised right through it, buddy. Well, thank you. We really appreciate it. I think we uh, guessed the weight right and guessed the track right. And Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. A little bit more than guessing. I think there's some serious strategy going on. You're being a little humble right now. Well, I guess that's the way to be most of the time. But yeah, we've been, uh, we're real fortunate. We've been chasing Bill Leshner all year long and he's had an excellent season. Congratulations to him. And it's, uh, it's been a wonderful year. Nice way to end the season for you though, right? Absolutely, very good way to end the season. Nice words, our fan favorite goes to Don Nelson. Everybody loves that wicked IH Chevy combo.
Hope you had a great time tonight. We certainly had a great time bringing you all the pulling action courtesy of the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League.